Hi boys and girls. Today when we annotate, we are going to be thinking about story structure. So let's first take a look at our story. We've read it before with our vocabulary. I can tell by the pictures that this story has taken place a long time ago. I can see he's looking at a map. They're reading by candlelight. They wear different clothing than we do now. Even their hairstyles are different. And when I look through the rest of our text, I can see that I know this story has taken place in the past. There are other things we think about when we think of story structure. We learned before that the stories have a beginning, middle, and an end. I also know that stories have a setting, which is where and when a story takes place. Stories also have characters or people in the story. Those are things that we need to think about when we're reading. Those are things that I will underline as I'm annotating. So let's decide who our characters are, where the story takes place, and if we can single out a beginning, middle, and an end of our story. Oftentimes, stories also have a problem. We know this story that Ben Franklin had a problem. So we will be sure to annotate the problem and discuss whether or not they fix their problem by the end of the story. Let's get started. It was the afternoon on December 23rd, 1776. A heavy snow was falling outside Benjamin Franklin's house, north of Philadelphia. Inside, Ben Franklin sat at his desk. This paragraph tells me where the story takes place. Philadelphia. It also tells me when, December 23rd, and the date. 1776 is the year. If I wanted to be really specific, I could say that it takes place in Franklin's house. But we also learned of one character so far. Benjamin Franklin. Let's see who else we can talk about. Is there anything you want me to do, Mr. Franklin? It was Tom, a 12-year-old boy who lived next door. Tom often did small jobs around Franklin's house. Well, now I know another character, Tom, a 12-year-old boy who lives next door. No, thank you, Tom, said Franklin. But you looked worried, Mr. Franklin. I am. The war is not going well. Franklin was talking about the Revolutionary War in 1776. The United States, as we know it, had not been formed. At that time, the country was made up of 13 colonies. The colonies were ruled from far away in England. The British treated the colonists badly. So the people in the colonies declared war on England. They wanted to be free and rule themselves. So we do have a problem. They even state it right here. We have a problem, Tom. General Washington, the leader of our army, has lost several battles, explained Franklin. So after one and a half years, we are close to lo losing the war. So here is our problem. We are close to losing the war. And we can be specific. It's the Revolutionary War. And he's worried that it's not going well. Let's keep going. What can we do to turn things around, asked Tom. Washington has a plan to defeat the British, but we don't know how we can get to it to work, said Franklin. A plan? Franklin explained, see this map? Washington is here, on the Pennsylvania side of the Delaware River. The enemy is on the other side in New Jersey. Washington wants to cross the river on Christmas and make a surprise attack. He wants to get to the en enemy soldiers while they're sleeping. So here I'm going to highlight that Washington has a plan, but they're not quite sure how it's going to work. That might be part of their problem, but that's definitely what's happening in the beginning of our story. 
We've met two of our characters. We know that they have a problem of losing the Revolutionary War. And they have a plan, but they're not sure how to execute it yet. What's stopping him? asked Tom. Washington needs boats to cross the river, but he doesn't know if he will get the boats on time. I need to get him this message. The boats will arrive in two days. Then you need to leave right away, said Tom. I know, but I am too old to make the long trip. Tom saw Franklin look sad. Then Tom had an idea. Send me? You? It's too dangerous. If the British so soldiers find you, they could throw you in jail, cried Franklin. You are just a boy. I am strong. I want to help. Well, on this page, we know that Washington needs boats to cross the river. And Franklin has boats for him, but he doesn't know that the boats will arrive in two days. He has to get him a message. I need to get him this message, he says. So that is an important part of our story. But he's too old to make that long trip. And Tom wants to do it. Tom wants to help. So this is what's happening in the middle of our story. Franklin looked at the eager boy. The whole war was at stake. Here, he said, handing Tom the note, take this message to Washington. It is in a secret code. Tom went, off went Tom, his feet sinking into the deep snow. Even with a heavy coat, he was shivering, but he tramped on. About four miles into his trip, Tom spotted a band of British soldiers. He tried to jump to the side of the road to avoid them, but it was too late. Who are you, demanded a soldier. Tom shook with fear. Maybe he's a spy, said another soldier, and he searched him. So, here, Franklin hands Tom the note and says, take this message to Washington. It's a secret code. So he's walking in the winter time, almost four miles into his trip, but British soldiers pulled him over and they are searching him. I think that they are going to maybe take him or just take his note. I underlined down here that they were searching him. The soldiers went through Tom's pockets. Aha, said one, a paper. The British found Franklin's secret message to Washington. Bread, cheese, jam, what's this? Asked the soldier, puzzled. It's just a list of food I need to get, answered Tom. For what, snapped the officer. Well here, the soldiers found his note. They found Franklin's secret message to Washington, but Tom told them that is just a list, a list of food. Let's see if he can trick them. Tom had to think fast. The list is for Christmas. My family is having a party. Bread, cheese, jam. That's not much of a party, laughed the officer. Go get your, go on your way. Tom had fooled them. That's important. Only someone who knew the code could figure out the words on the paper were about boats. Tom quickly went on his way. Three hours later, he arrived at Washington's camp. So he made it. General Washington, now that we've met this character, we can say that he was part of our story, said Tom. I have an urgent letter from Mr. Franklin. Tom handed the general the paper. Washington unfolded it and read. With the code in mind, he understood the message. Slowly, a smile crossed across Washington's face. The boats will be here by 6 a.m. on Christmas. Good work. Young man, said Washington, rustling Tom's hair. You are a patriot. Tom grinned. My men and I will be able to make our sneak attack on the British. Son, I think that the direction of the war is about to change. So they're going to be able to attack British when they're not 
expecting it and the war could possibly take a turn where they would win it. So that would be what's happening at the end of our story. Tom was able to get him the message. Washington could understand the secret code and now they have a plan and I think it's going to work. This word patriot means that he is proud and excited and represents our country very well. He's patriotic. Have you ever heard of that? When you're patriotic, you're a good example for our country. And that's what he was saying Tom was. Good work, boys and girls.